Thanks for joining me for another video. This time I'm going to get technical. I'm going to put some basics of ball reaction out there to try and help you either dial in a reaction or flip the script with a ball that you just aren't getting along with. I posted a question on my channel in the community tab a little while ago asking you for the ball you disliked the most or the one that you had the hardest time getting along with. The responses were along the lines of what I was expecting. The vast majority of the time it seems that when somebody doesn't get along with a ball it's obvious to me why. It's a, it's a bad matchup to their game, uh, they've got the wrong surface on it, used the wrong layout, playing the wrong part of the lane, or just plain expected and wanted it to be or do something that it wasn't built for. Either someone was saying that the, the Crux Prime wasn't finishing hard enough, so they took it to a thousand grit and it still didn't work, or they were saying that the, the Idle Pearl wasn't very good on wet, dry, or carry down. And all of these things is why I wanted to make this video, not to not to call everyone out and tell them they're doing it wrong, but to explain some misconceptions and help you get the most out of a ball that you spent a couple hundred bucks on. Surface is the place I'm going to start because it's the most misunderstood. And most of the time people associate more surface with more hook, which is what it does, but they also associate hook with back end. And I'd argue that hook and back end are opposite things. The more a ball hooks or the more traction it has, the earlier it's going to roll and the smoother it's going to be on the back end. Adding surface to try and create more back ends like putting snow tires on a stock car to get it to grip more. Uh, the racing fans out there will automatically know that that's backwards. Snow tires have less surface area in contact with the track. They're soft and they'd get shredded inside of a lap and the cars would be sliding all over the place. Snow tires are built to work on snow. They have teeth to dig through the snow to get some kind of contact with the pavement or some kind of traction. Racing slicks are built to maximize the surface area of the tire in contact with the dry, smooth, tacky surface of the track. If you're trying to get more reaction out of a ball or more visible hook, more back end, you want to reduce or smooth or even polish the surface. This way the ball will hydroplane on the oil and then react strongly to the dry. If there's surface on a ball, it's actively hooking or getting traction through the oil and will have quite a bit less surface area in contact with the lane when it hits dry boards. Something else is that most of the time bowling balls are a lot stronger than people actually think they are. The spec cover, for example, is super, super ridiculously strong, and with a rough surface on it, it's too strong for the majority of regular league conditions people bowl on, so it's going to be early and smooth, and the idea of adding more surface to that or making it even rougher to make it hook more is 180 degrees the wrong direction. You need less surface. You want the ball motion happening further down the lane, further from the foul line, closer to the pins, and the idea that once the ball shines up that you need to add that surface right back and then say the ball's died because it's literally hooking at your feet, as soon as you let go of it, that's just absolutely wrong. You want some shine on your Crux Prime or Pro Motion, and you'll want it on your Gravity Evolve unless you're bowling on a 30 mil 45 foot pattern. For my Evolve video, I got shots with the Pro Motion shiny at gauge, and it looked great. When I tried to add surface to get some sanded footage, it got really early and soft. So basically, surface gives the ball more traction. It makes it earlier, makes it smoother. Polish reduces total hook, but it increases back end reaction and visible shape. Another facet of surface that is overlooked, uh, once you change the surface of a ball, you need to get a game or two back on it to redevelop the track. Once you freshen the surface, it increases the peaks and valleys on the cover, but you also lose some of the footprint or basically the flatter spot that's worn on the ball as you throw it repeatedly. Where it touches the lane actually flattens slightly and increases the amount of ball touching the lane, which increases the traction. When a ball is new out of the box, you need a handful of games on it to see the true ball reaction. A ball will always take about 10-ish games to kind of settle down into some kind of consistency. The ball reaction you have game one isn't going to be the same. You'll have game three or game six. So while most of this might be stuff you just don't know, the idea that somebody would spend a couple hundred bucks on a ball Throw it for a game on a condition that may or may not be fresh uh, when they haven't even warmed up yet. Just to decide that it sucks and then sell it is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, at that point, you're really just more interested in hating something than you are trying to actually make it work. Hopefully this has helped you understand some of the ins and outs of Surface, and Surface is easy to change. So, so if what you're doing isn't working, don't hesitate to try something different, and if that doesn't work either, change it again. Now, in the next episode, we'll talk about ball choice slash ball selection and making sure that you're picking the right ball in the first place. Thanks for watching.